Hey, this is Maya from Horizon Realty. How can I help you find your dream home today? Hi, Maya. I'm looking for uh, something with a lake view, modern kitchen, and a peaceful neighborhood. The budget's about $500,000. Perfect. Let me check what we have for you. I found three great options for you. Top match is a condo at 7296 Park Abbey in Phoenix for $486,649. It's got three bedrooms, two and a half baths, modern kitchen with a large island and big windows. Want to hear about the others? Okay, pause. Did you catch what just happened? I didn't say three bedrooms. I didn't search for exact address. I didn't use any exact keywords. I described what I want. It understood the meaning. It searched for the images to find the modern kitchen and it got results fast. In the next 15 minutes, we're building this exact system. Voice AI agent that understands natural language, image search that sees what modern kitchen means, and hybrid search combining semantic, keyword, and visual similarity. All powered by Milvis, the number one open source vector database with 40,000 GitHub stars and trusted by over 10,000 companies to handle billions of vectors with sub 10 millisecond response times. The starter code is in the description, so let's go build this production-ready system. Before we dive in, let me show you why traditional search is lacking. I built this simple demo to show the difference. Let me search for modern kitchen lake view using traditional keyword matching. Look at the results. Modern townhome on Lakewood Drive. It matched modern and lake, but it's not even lakefront. This is a problem. Keyword search looks for words in the text. It has zero understanding of what these things actually mean or what they look in the photos. Now, watch what happens with Novus hybrid search. Same query, but different results. These are actual lakefront properties with updated kitchens. That's semantic understanding. And that's where the vector databases changes everything. Here's the breakthrough. Vector databases like Milvis don't just store text or images directly. They store meaning as numbers. These are called embeddings. They capture semantic meaning in mathematical space. Similar meanings get similar numbers. And Milvis can search billions of these in milliseconds. So let me show you exactly how hybrid search works under the hood. Look at this diagram. When a user asks for something like modern kitchen with lake view, Milvis runs three parallel searches simultaneously. In path one, a semantic search, it converts a query into a text embedding vector and searches for properties with similar meaning. So peaceful neighborhood matches quiet area, even though the words are different. Path two is a keyword search, traditional full text matching. This hatches exact phrases and ensures properties that explicitly mention your keywords rank high. Path three, image search. This is where it gets really cool. It uses clip embeddings to search the actual property photos for visual similarity. So modern kitchen finds kitchens that look modern, even if the description never uses the word. All three searches happen in parallel. Remember, we're talking about sub 10 millisecond latency here. Then Novus fuses the results together using a ranking algorithm, combining semantic relevance, keyword matches, and visual similarity into a single score. The output, the most relevant properties rank by how well they match your actual intent, not just keywords. This is why hybrid search is so powerful. You get the precision of keyword matching, the intelligence of semantic understanding, and the visual awareness of image search all in a single query. Here's what we're building today. A user calls our AI voice agent in Go High Level. It transcribes their speech, extracts what they want, and calls an MCP server. That's Model Context Protocol, which triggers an NA10 workflow. The workflow formats the query, searches Milvis using hybrid search to get ranked results, and summarizes it in a text-to-speech friendly way to the voice agent to present the results back to the user. So now let's break down the steps. First, we'll need Milvis running. I've created a railway template that deploys the complete stack with only one click. So check out this architecture. We're deploying five services simultaneously. Mavis Standalone, which is the core vector database engine. Etcd, which handles metadata and service coordination. MinIO, which provides the object storage for vectors and indexes. Uh, gRPC, which is the reverse proxy that handles network routing. And our custom REST API proxy that simplifies the API calls we'll be making from NA10. All five services come up together, fully configured and network. 
So while this is deploying, let's keep in mind that uh, Mavis has three main deployment options. Mavis Lite for local prototyping, standalone like we're, we're using now, and distributed Kubernetes production clusters. Or if you prefer a fully managed option with auto scaling and zero DevOps, then you can use Zillis Cloud, which is built on Mavis. So perfect, all the services are online. Now we copy the REST API endpoint and we'll add that into our NA10 workflow in a minute. In terms of test data, I prepared 50 sample properties for this tutorial. Each property has a text description, photos, and metadata like price and bedrooms. There's a link in the description for the test data script that creates that data and populates the database. Now, the magic is how we store this. For each property, we've created three types of vectors and metadata. Text embedding, which captures the semantic meaning of the description. Image embeddings, which is uh, one for each photo, like kitchen, exterior, etc and metadata, price, bedrooms, address, etc. This enables the hybrid search. All right, so now let's dig into the NA10 workflow, which connects the voice AI agent to the Mavis uh, vector database. So on the left here is the MCP server trigger. So this is connected to the Go High Level uh, AI agent, and it has inside here a tool, which is the real estate property search tool. So if I go into here, uh, the description is useful for search real estate properties, right? And then I pass into it a workflow ID of uh, this workflow so that it triggers this uh, subflow. So inside this subflow, it passes into it a uh, query parameter of string type. And an example of this would be Lakeview, modern, fiction, peaceful neighborhood, price max like this. So this is passed directly from the voice AI agent through uh, the Go High Level high level platform and then this goes into a node that extracts this information and uh, extracts the uh, json object that i've put a structured output so original message process message and filters that come directly from uh, the voice agent and then the next two nodes are code nodes that uh, do some data validation making sure that the data is not in error state and then this is uh, some additional formatting and error processing that we do in this node now this node here is a HTTP node. So this HTTP node, I have as the URL, the URL from the railway template that uh, we instantiated. So this points to the Mavis uh, uh, vector database and it calls into it with the various parameters. So this will go into Mavis and it will then do the uh, hybrid search. So this is a type hybrid search and it does a, uh, a weighted ranking of the search and then from there i use a summarizer which takes the output and then it summarizes in this case i just want to return the top two to three results for the best match so i, I give it the original query and then the uh, search results coming back from mavis and then uh, this will then uh, go back to my uh, ai agent uh, in go high level all right now let's hook up our voice ai agent so i am in the go high level interface dashboard i select ai agents i'm going to select voice ai I'm going to select inbound and look at the agent list. So Maya is a voice agent that I've created. So I've selected the name uh, Maya. The business name is Horizon Realty. I've selected English as the language for the agent. And I've selected this voice called Hope. So let's give it a listen. Um, OK, so this might. But there's a lot of options that you have here for voices. So you can select from any of these voices. And then I select the time zone, and I can select the large language model that I want to use to converse with uh, the user. So there's a lot of options to choose from. And then I can give it a greeting. So this is an inbound greeting. Hi, this is Maya from Horizon Realty. How can I find your uh, dream home today? So then I go into the agent goals. And one of the key things I'm going to do is to give it a prompt. So I've given it a prompt of what its role is and what its goal is. And one of the key things I've asked it to do is to call the real estate property search tool uh, to find more information about uh, the property that the user is interested in. All right, so this is uh, the link between the voice AI agent, uh, NA10, as well as uh, Mavis uh, vector search. All right, so this will allow us to uh, connect. So let me show you exactly how that's done. So in here, I have uh, a section called model context protocol. So this is where I do the connection. So I go and add an MCP server. So I've done that here, and I'll, I'll give you the example. So I give it a name, so real estate property search. 
I give it the MCP URL. So this URL is the URL for my NA10 workflow that has the MCP server trigger. So I select that. I give it a timeout of 10 seconds, and then I give it a tool. So once I specify, so I, here, once I specify the MCP server, it's going to go into that server and it's gonna show me all the tools that are available. So I'll select this tool here, and then I can just uh, give a description of when it's uh, used. So in this case, I've given already uh, a description. So here I said, whenever the user asks for information on real estate properties available, then call this tool. So I can also do some further customization. So uh, when uh, Maya is searching for information, uh, she can say, let me check that for you. Thanks for holding, I'll be right back. So this is a customization that we can do. And then, so once you have this tool and then you have this prompt, then you're ready to go. Now, the last thing you do is just connect it to the phone number that uh, you have associated. So I've connected it here. And then uh, here, lastly, you have the call log. So it gives you uh, all uh, record of all the calls that have come in. So now when you put everything together, you have the Go High Level Voice Agent that then connects to the MCP server through MCP protocol, calls into the NA10 workflow, that calls into the Mavis vector database and then completes the cycle. And then you'll be able to see the result that we have in this demo. Hey, this is Maya from Horizon Realty. How can I help you find your dream home today? Hi, Maya. I'm looking for uh, something with a lake view, modern kitchen, and a peaceful neighborhood. The budget's about $500,000. Perfect. Let me check what we have for you. So now let's talk about scalability. Right now we have 50 properties, but this architecture that powers this workflow is built for massive scales. So let's see why. Here's the Mavis architecture. Uh, we don't need to go to every detail, but at a high level on the left, those purple boxes are the doors your app goes through. When you have more users, you just add more doors. In the middle, the color boxes are workers. Some bring in data, some organize it, some answer search questions. As you grow, you simply add more workers of each type. On the right, the big storage box is where the shared warehouse, where all the data lives. No matter how many doors or workers you add, it's still the same warehouse. So from small tests to billions of vectors, this picture doesn't really change. Just more doors, more workers, same warehouse. That's why Mavis is built for scale. All right, so let's zoom out for a second. What we just built isn't just a real estate agent. This is the foundation for modern AI applications. Vector databases aren't optional anymore. They're the infrastructure layer for semantic search, RAG, recommendation systems, multimodal AI, and conversational AI with memory. And Mavis is the best in class solution. It's not just the most popular open source vector database, it's proven at scale. Over 10,000 organizations in production, sub 10 millisecond latency at billion scale, and cost effective architecture. This is an architecture you can build on and scale with confidence. Everything we built today is in the links in the description. You get the sample property data set, complete NA10 workflow, go high level AI agent prompt, website source code, and one click railway deploy. So what are the things you can do next? You can build a location-based search with maps, uh, price history tracking, email follow-ups with property recommendation, and the list can go on and on. So customize it, make it yours. And if you build something cool, please tag me. I want to see it. So if you want to go deeper, you can also try out the Zelex Cloud free tier. And Mavis has a lot of great documentation, uh, as well as a very helpful Discord community, which has been super friendly. Now, the best way to learn stuff is to build and start with this project, adapted to your use case. The concepts of embeddings, vector search, hybrid queries, they apply everywhere. So if this was helpful, uh, please hit the like button and subscribe. And huge thanks to Zelex for sponsoring this video and making this content possible. They do incredible work making vector search accessible to everyone.